Welcome back to my mental health and crime channel. My name is Huda London. I'm a licensed cognitive behavior therapist and a licensed mental health counselor. Please like, share and subscribe if you enjoy the contents in this channel. Today, I would like to start by paying my respects, my prayers, and offering my condolence to the people of Southern Texas where the shooting happened yesterday. This was a tragedy that is unimaginable. This is something that is a worst nightmare for any parent I'm really shocked, and I can imagine you're as shocked as me, if not worse. Since you're a closer, or since you're in the States, most of the people that I know are my subscribers. My heart really goes out to the small community that it happened in. The sad thing is, it leaves this sadness, this bitterness, this hurtfulness, and especially the concern. It still lingers on for a long time to come because like we are aware of, this ain't the first massacre shooting, and this may, this won't be the last. Hopefully, it would have been lovely if it, it would have been love, the last, but it can't. And the reason I say that is unless the gun laws change, we all know this situation is going to continue being like that. It is really it's really disheartening to see that at the end of the day it's people's choice, but to see that there's so many people who still support the gun laws. There should be more stricter checks. Because everybody above 18 or 21, if they just have the right to go and get themselves a gun or a weapon or whatever, we shouldn't forget that young adults and children's brain isn't completely developed like studies say until they're 25, 26 years of age. So giving a young person, especially 18, 19, 20 years old, just because they have their clean record, giving them that opportunity for them to go and purchase a gun legally, I personally think is a very wrong idea. And I'm saying that as a therapist, honestly. Not only as a parent, as a therapist. Because I can see that I have two teenagers, but I have a 26-year-old daughter. So I do see certain things are like, they will never be, no matter how smart and calm they are, I would still say they have no right to carry a weapon at that age. I can understand someone who's above 30, actually, honestly, and even them, I would have still said nobody should be allowed to carry a weapon unless it's law enforcement or, or someone in those authorities that need to actually protect the public, like it's done in Europe for the most. 
We have other crimes in UK, I won't lie. We do have, we have the knife crimes. And that has been even rising the last couple of months, just like the weapon crimes and all that have been rising up in the States. I think after COVID, it just became, uh, sorry to say, madness. It's like people don't obey laws anymore. People have lost patience. I think it's due to the two years of the COVID. Up to today, there are some people who are still have decided to be isolated and stay at home and stay away from society. So all those things affects and plays a role, especially with young adults. So we've all gone through that, and I'm sure you all were like me, having teenagers at home every day when COVID first started. At the start of one life, I thought it was, I was so happy, so thrilled to have them at home. Because obviously, we did not know what COVID was going to bring. We all were scared. That is a part of even anxiety that I wanted to talk about. Anxiety usually comes with things that are unknown. Sometimes you feel the unknown, since you don't know it, you lose control, kind of. So COVID was something like that. So we ended up mostly, especially the students and the youngsters, ended up being at home. They were homeschooling. A lot of changes has happened. They weren't having the social support. So there was a lot of, I think, things that are contributing to all these situations, like what happened in southern Texas. But obviously not. That's not only one of the things. I believe there is. I'm not blaming it on mental illness, but I believe mental illness is from different places of people that they don't understand. Because like this young boy, we don't know. They're still try trying to figure out his life and, and his history. We don't know what he's been doing. He could have either been on anything. There are many important things to know before we even pass a judgment. Was he on drugs? Was he? Did his behavior change? Did he? Like like they said allegedly, he failed his graduation, so that really upset him. And he was having an argument with his grandmother and he killed her, he shot her, and then he left and then he went to the school. So I wonder, like, was he in a psychosis or stage? I don't know what was. Because for somebody to go to that stage, that means they have no remorse anymore. Sorry, this is for entertainment purpose only. I'm being honest, that's what I believe. It is kind of... Somebody who basically, for whatever reason, emotions are an issue with them. You could even see, sorry to say, I don't know much about him, but just looking at his eyes, when they put up his picture, his eyes look so dull, it looked blank. But then it's sad because I'm sure if, I don't know if he was living with his grandmother, but I'm sure if he was living with his grandmother, his grandmother was aware that his behavior was changing. And now we find out that allegedly, I saw it in one news clip that he said that when, when he was before, right before he's going to do this, he said it on social media, children don't be, children, you should be scared. I don't know allegedly if that is true or if that is, but it was one of the uh, the serious channels, known channels. So there is. Then we had the Buffalo incident ten days ago, which was really terrible, which they named as a hate crime, hate crime. And he's another eighteen years old too. Then we had the church killing. There's so many things that is just going on. 
And these people are not tired of, tired of the violence. The sad thing is, that's what I'm saying, it's really difficult to know who has a mental illness, who is going to have a mental illness, that it's on its way. You get me? We don't know who is who, because just running a background check may just show that the person is not a criminal, but it doesn't show their mental health evaluation. I believe every, actually think about everyone who wants to like keep their children and people safe. I would advise anyone who needs a gun should get a psychiatrist evaluation. Because what's the point if a person is has irrational thoughts or if a person is not thinking clear, has disordinated thoughts, or ATTOs, then, then there's no point hand, handing them out a gun. Because then obviously they're going to think irrational like this boy in south, southern Texas and like the, the one, the, the other boy in, what's his name, Buffalo. Such things are going to keep on happening. That's why when they say, see something, say some, something, it is, it is really important. Because I'm sure somebody knew something because his social his social media friends knew about things he was saying there. So somebody should have alerted the authority. That's the thing. My and I think one thing that will really help, actually, I think one of the one of the things that everyone maybe all of us need to learn is the mindfulness mindfulness uh, branch in mental health. It is really important because it goes in six different parts. Mindfulness saves us, honestly, from many different things. Like if you are mindful of our anxiety, what triggers up our anxiety, then you can do something ahead. Like you can't stop the future. And you can't stop the past. You can't go back and change the past. But you can deal with the present. So you need to be, like, if you're mindful, like, this is what, okay, I accepted I have an anxiety problem. Now this is how I'm going to deal with my anxiety problem. I'm going to accept that I have it. Okay, I feel anxious now. Let it pass away. I'm not going to start, like, hyping myself up more and getting more anxious about it. That's all that it's going to do. So the best thing is when you know you're anxious, stay away from what triggers up your anxiousness. If you feel like you have a depression disorder, you're suffering from one, try and stay away from isolate. Like, don't isolate yourself. Try and always mingle repeat with your loved ones and all even if you don't want to just take a walk outside try try and like have a bit more motivation in anything you like just try and get outside because once you get into that negative circle it is really difficult to get out and that circle can lead into social anxiety and and all kind of relationship term all all that. So when it comes to anxiety, I would advise people to stay away from what triggers people's anxiety. Because it's normally once you have anxiety, you start you like you physically you're feeling the anxiety, you feel sweaty and you feel physical changes in you and your speech may be too quick or too fast or you may, yeah. A lot happens when somebody has anxieties. So what we usually do is we try and, there's different techniques in CBT, that's a good thing. And it's really effective. But the best way, the simple way, and the first way I would advise anyone is Admit that you have anxiety or depression or whatever you have. 
once you admit it, then learn how to work on it and deal with it with your therapist or with yourself. The main thing is obviously yourself because you can't have a therapist for life. It's too expensive and, it, and it's something that you can do yourself. That's a good thing. At the start, obviously, you would need a therapist. So you need, if it's like a mental illness that is a serious mental illness, like example like schizophrenia, bipolar, and it depends what stage, not all of them are that serious, but they are most severe symptoms that we obviously I would have recommended anyone to go to a psychiatrist for that and get a right evaluation and then to go to therapy. But if it's something like anxiety and depression, I believe usually when people come to CBT or you know, when the anxiety See, the thing is, that's where I would have considered, like many people use the mental health terms, honestly, very easy, very likely. That I believe everyone in life does suffer to a period of anxiety once a year, twice a year, whatsoever. But it depends how severe that anxiety is to be called that you have an anxiety diagnosis. That is when the DSM-5 comes in. Because there has to be a lot of questionary tick boxes that you have to check, you know, that you have to cross. And maybe some of them, just say example like bipolar, you may have to have three, three of the six boxes or seven boxes to be diagnosed bipolar one or bipolar two example. The same with anxiety and depression and all. Everyone is different and then we try and obviously find out where does that, where's that anxiety coming from? Is that anxiety triggering you so badly that it's affecting you from doing your daily work? And then obviously anxiety brings even sleepless nights that I suffer at times. Sleepless nights, it can bring lack of appetite, It can bring negative self-talk that is very normal. That's why in CBT we try, our, our job is to try and help people to think positive. Because if your thoughts are positive, then automatically your emotions become positive too. And that leads into a positive behavior. So they all are connected. But once you start having negative self-thoughts, Telling yourself, oh, example, like it's all my fault. I can never get to do something right. Nobody likes me. Or just say you're walking, you're in a classroom and you're walking to go to the toilet and your friends are just talking and they start laughing. And then you automatically get paranoid and start thinking, oh, they're talking about me. Is there something on my skirt? Is there, is there some dirt on my skirt? Why are they laughing at me? No. So such things do happen, but then it's about, because at the, at the end of the day, you want to do this for yourself. So you shouldn't be concerned about what other people think. That's what I always say. What you need to think about is to work your anxiety and whether it's anxiety, depression, other mental illness, to get it in a stage that it's monitored, that you can live with it. Because see, like accepting something, like accepting a diagnosis is, there's not much you can do. Like ex example, mental illness. But what you can do is you can try and stay away from things that trigger up that anxiety or the, or the depression. So like negative thoughts, if you start having negative self-talks, or if you think negative of, of others all the time, or if you start assuming things and all, all those are going to lead to your anxiety being triggered up. And then you'll end up in a bad pattern, not sleeping well, insomnia, then you may need medication, all of that. So what I'm trying to say is I believe it is really, really up to oneself. Like once you know you have, 
you are suffering with something, with a disorder or diagnosis, deal with it because anxiety does. People think that anxiety is, yes, yeah, anxiety just go off. Not only anxiety goes off, some people's anxiety really triggers up. Example, people who have bipolar 1, not all cases, but many cases, schizophrenia, many things. That's why it's always important to keep the anxiety and the depression on a, on a level to make sure that such things don't trigger them up. Because once it triggers up, if their anxiety triggers up, and just say they have bipolar from before, it is going to trigger up their bipolar too. So all these symptoms are the are the cause of the illness. So some so some people decide to medicate with themselves with it or self medicate themselves, but that's not the right way. The best way is to if you if you believe it's uncontrollable and it's over your control, then seek medical help. Ask your doctor. And there's so much useful things these days, so many useful therapies even. But ther you can combine therapy with maybe medication. It's all, it depends on what is the best evaluation in a person's case. But I really believe some people have noticed that things like yoga and aroma bath and all does actually calm the nerves and calms anxiety, things like lavender and such things. It's a known fact, so there's different ways. Some people just need to go out and have a walk. So some people just need to, yeah, find an activity or something. It's always best to keep your mind occupied in a healthy way, if that makes sense. Because once your mind is occupied, not over-occupied, obviously, but when it's occupied in, in a good way and you know you're doing something beneficial, and if you prepare your things on time, that is very important. That's why half of the problem of people's anxiety starts from there. When people run l late, they wait for things for the last minute. I do that at times too. And then automatically everything starts going in a wrong pattern. Just say, example, somebody has to get to work, they miss the tube, or then they'll have to wait for the next tube to come. That means they're late at work. When they come late, the boss already has a problem with them. Then it's going to start with the boss, and then maybe they'll get a warning. Then the person starts worrying about, oh, I'm going to get fired. How am I going to feed my family? How am I going to feed myself? You see, it's very easy for anxiety just to build up, build up, build up, and increase. And some people don't find another way out, and if they are alone by themselves and they have social anxiety, you know, that can lead into serious depressions, can lead to, God forbid, suicide. That's why it's important that we're very mindfulness should be one module that should have been in every, every university and every college. No matter what branch people are taking, I believe whether you're taking lawyer, whether you're going to become a counsel, whether you're going to become a doctor, or whether even you're going to work in a restaurant, like become a cook even, you get me? Any job, I believe mindfulness and mental health awareness should be something that they should add into all the children's, all the students' programs. Because mindfulness would have save so much, so much headaches, it would have saved